Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 36 of Eat, Drink, Write, an Urban Fantasy Whiteboard. Today, we're going to be talking about gods in science fiction fantasy, urban fantasy, epic fantasy. But mm -hmm. before we get to that, how was your week? It was good. Uh, so Tuesday was my birthday. So I, um, and it was an average day in terms of work and stuff. But then I got to hang out with Sydney and, and Zoom with you guys um, and all that kind of stuff. And I, and I had a lot of tequila. So that was fun. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really good. I was slightly hungover yesterday. So that, that was that. Um, but it wasn't as bad as I expected. So yay. I figured, you know, I'm 27 now. I, I should be really feeling hangovers. But you know, I, I felt fine. Um, writing wise, it hasn't been great. I have not been writing that much this week. Uh, I guess I've just been busy with work and school and classes and um, trying to juggle all of that is, is, is a lot sometimes. So um, did not get much done in, in writing. Hopefully I can after, after this episode. So yeah, but it's been good. I didn't get much writing done, but um, we're up in Virginia right now helping out my mom and dad. My mom had knee surgery, mm -hmm. and so we came up to help out. Um, Riley is with us since she's 100% digital learning. She was able to come too, so that works. So that's what we're doing. My mom is doing great. Her knee is doing great. She's already graduated from the walker to a cane. She's super strong. So things are going well here, but I haven't written. I have gotten a lot of work work done, but mm -hmm. I haven't yeah. got done any writing. What are you eating and drinking? I'm drinking tea because I had enough tequila on Tuesday to, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to settle down on the alcohol for, for a hot second there. Um, so I'm drinking my normal tea. It's English breakfast tea, and that's one that I drink um, every morning. It's basically my coffee because I do not drink coffee. It makes me too jittery. Mm -hmm. um, so usually I drink tea instead, and so I'm drinking my usual uh, English breakfast. So I'm still getting a little bit of caffeine, and I'll be a little bit lively. <laughs> what are you eating? Oh, I'm eating my, um, so my lovely parents, including my mother, uh, got me a orange chocolate cake from a specialty bakery here uh, in Athens where I live. Um, and it was amazing. So I am eating that because I think it might be the best cake that I've ever had. And uh, y'all, we we wanted to do something special for her because we couldn't get together on her birthday um, with COVID and everything that university of Georgia had 800 cases, something like that in a day. So we can't get together. <laughs> yeah. But we wanted to do something to make her day spe special until we ca can get together to exchange gifts. And so we had this cake delivered. Her girlfriend was in on it. Her little sister was in on it. So th that was really cool. We had balloons out there it was pretty awesome. So, and then we zoomed together so that we could all see each other, but that cake, I'll have to put it in our podcast. I would love to give her a shout out um, because I, she did a great job and she, hand, she hand delivered it herself. I mean, it, it was a, awesome. What a neat it, woman. So it was fantastic. And fun story about the, having my girlfriend in on it and everything was the night before um, we were, texting and I was like oh you know what I think I want a cookie cake like I think I do I want to go get a cookie cake and she did not answer that text she said nothing and you know it was fine because uh, I think we were playing video games and so you know I figured she was busy with the video game and then we started texting about other things and it just like went right over my head that she just did not answer that one and she was like yeah you said that and I was like okay well you're getting a real cake <laughs> and also we can go get you a cookie cake if you want and I was like no this is great <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was funny because I texted her and said, okay, I don't know what you've got planned, but this is what we're doing to try to make her day special. And she said, I glad, I'm glad you told me because she was going to make you a cake. Oh, cool. And I was like, oh, I hate taking that away from her, but I really did want you to have something delivered from us that you didn't expect. So yeah, I'm glad you liked it. I am eating a little bit of a hodgepodge. Um, I've got some shrimp cocktail with this adorable Ooh. little glass. And that is adorable. Kamalata olives. I never know how to say that. The Greek I don't olives. Come, but, calm, ca I, don't know. I don't know. Yeah, something like, like that. Cal but, Cal I don't know. <laughs> they're very yummy. They're, they're red, yummy olives. So that's what I'm delicious. eating. Yeah. And I'm drinking um, Corbel sparkling pink. Um, it's not champagne, sparkling wine. Oh, lovely. So cool. very nice. Um, so I have jokes. Of course you do. I expect these now. <laughs> Since we're talking about gods in, in urban fantasy, I came up with God jokes. <laughs> oh, bless. 
<laughs> Let me hear them. So the first one is just kind of funny. It's not really a joke. It's a statement. Greek mythology in five words. Here are the five words. Unfortunately, Zeus was feeling horny. Oh, <laughs> I think that's more than, I don't know. Yeah, five words. I mean, that's Goodness. basically I mean, the root of true. every uh, Greek mythology god story that there is. It's true. This next one is horrible. All right. Why would Prometheus make a good mailman? Why? Because it's a job with a lot of delivering. He's the one, where, right. in case our re listeners don't know, he's the one who was tied to the side of a mountain forever having his liver eaten out of him by birds because... Delivering. Yes. yes. I, I got that. And uh, for, for those of you who don't watch the video, I had a massive eye roll <laughs> for my mother. Yeah, so. she does. I have one more. <laughs> All right. Why does God use Android phones? Why? Because he made the galaxy and the apple is forbidden. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like that one. That one's great. I like, I like that one too. Okay, uh, so gods and fantasy. Uh, a lot of fantasy and sci-fi, even sci-fi, have gods in them. Yeah, like uh, I know just right off the bat here, um, I know I've been talking to my friend and we, we talk about book plots and that kind of thing. Um, and he's told me about one of his sci-fis where uh, it, it does include the Greek gods, but he's adapted them in a way that it makes sense in a sci-fi. Um, and it's not a fantasy novel. It's a, it's a sci-fi novel. And uh, he's managed to adapt gods already and, you know, in that. So it is so hard to do that. It's hard to bring gods into a novel. I mean, it's creating an entire religious system, which is very difficult right. to do. Yeah. Um, gods can be real or they can be wishful thinking. Um, gods are usually the reason for everything existing. That's usually, it, it's an origin type mythology as to why gods are there. Yeah, um, which is super cool because like that allows for so many different explanations uh, that you can provide in your story. And mm -hmm. those, I mean, even when you provide those explanations, I feel like they don't even have to be true. They don't have to be true true the gods don't even have to be real but you can still have oh this is why this exists um and you know you can still add that that detail to your story yeah i, I think it's tricky to create gods in a story so i think in a separate episode we're going to have to do how to go about creating gods in your novel because there is so much that you need to think about in order to put a religious system into your novel yeah. Um, gods can be active in the world or unseen and unfelt. Um, you know, so there's any kind of thing that you can do with your novel to bring this, these gods into your novel. Right. Um, why have gods in your novel? Well, you know, adding religion to your novel can be a source of tension between your characters. Um, wars can be fought because of religious differences. Um, it can create tension between opposing countries. A, a lot of epic fantasy has, you know, these grand detailed societies on f differing continents and that kind of thing. And if each of them have a different religion, that gives you so much uh, fodder for tension between those groups. Absolutely. Um, and I, I think you talk about it a little bit later, so I won't say too much about it now, but I the the one of the first things that comes to mind when we're talking about religion and gods uh within novels is the the book of yours that i read first back way back in ninth grade um the the twins novel the religious uh details that you brought into that novel are something that i still remember which means you did them very well um so yeah well it was i'll talk about it later but it was highly based on D D. so ah, fair okay but um the, it can be the reason your protagonist and antagonist don't get along. I mean, or the reason why they do certain actions could be based on, and, and that is in my twin saga, that there is a lot of that because of the different religions that they act based on what their beliefs are. Right. Uh, prophecies, that's a big thing in urban fantasy and fantasy, and even science fiction can have prophecy in it um, if it's done right. And right. Well, I mean, like, 
even think, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, mm-hmm. think about like real world religion. There are prophecies in, in real world religion and Christianity and all kinds of other, other religions. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not as if it's far fetched to make a religion or a God that does prophecies and have it exist in your story. Yeah, I agree. Um, it adds depth to your world building. We've done episodes both on world building and on adding depth to your novel. So it, this is one of the things that can help both of those. It helps with your character building and the depth of your character, which we've done an episode on, on character development. Uh, so go check those out. But, yeah, absolutely. I, sorry, I keep interrupting okay. you. That's okay. Um, but you know, the gods themselves, like, I don't know if you could hear that, but apparently my headset's dying. Um, Uh-oh. it's fine. Uh, the, the gods can be characters themselves. Um, cause you were talking about character building and, and character depth. And, you know, I think an interesting, um, type of character to bring in is the God, you know, whether they're active, you know, like you say, or, um, unseen or whatever, but they can be a, a character themselves, depending on why they're in your story. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that they can be useful rocks to throw at your main characters, um, or they can be helpful, or they can be a mixture of both, which I think is more realistic. Yeah, we'll have to talk about Mercy Thompson's uh, ah, series yes. <laughs> in a little bit. Um, so thinking about what kind of possible gods can you put into your novel? Uh, there are, like in the Roman and Greek times, there were gods of individual things, like the god of fire, the god of war. There were God of chaos. Yes. So there were gods on all these individual things. Um, actually, I think that some of the witchcraft uh, or druid re- uh, religions also had individual gods of certain gods of nature, gods of the moon, that kind of thing. Right. Um, you could have one all-powerful God that's active in the world, like in um, Supernatural. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That God is right there. He's writing the story, watching the events. Um, He's super active. You could have one all-powerful God that's not active or seen. You could have gods of elements, like fire, earth, air, water, You could have gods over specific people. So if you have a world that has different continents and different types of people, you could have each of those regions have their own God and those Uh, gods are very protective over their own people. I see. Could then lead to war in between and that kind of thing, especially if you make the gods themselves bicker amongst themselves, they could then use the people like chess players on the board. Yeah, that would be really interesting as a point of conflict and uh, like plot points and stuff. I mean, like, because what about people who, you know, can you convert if you started off with this person and, and your God is real and, um, you know, they're there and they're either active or not, but can they leave that set of people and go and comfortably be with another culture because they have a completely different God? And what do you have to do to convert? Right. Do you, do you have to... Um, kill off a member of your own religion to prove to the new God that that's, you know, you're worthy of them. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can do with that. Right. I like that idea a lot. That's actually super interesting. I like the next one, which I came up with is gods of specific magic. What do you mean by that? Like what if there was a God of fire magic or a God of, um, you know, there could be more science-based magic. There could be all these different types of magic that are from, you know, there's druids, there's magicians, there's clerics, there's all these other things. What if, what if there were gods over each of those? Each different- one of those? Mm-hmm. That would be super interesting. I wonder, I wonder what their power would lie in. Then would they just be, are they a god because they're the most powerful of that type of magic? Or are they a god that can control what that magic does? and who of their followers they give the power to. Oh, that's another really good point. Yeah. Oh, this is a great topic. This is actually super interesting. Yeah. There Not are that so I didn't think it wouldn't be, but. <laughs> so many things that you can do with gods in your book. It can, it can be the plot point itself. You know, like in Supernatural, I, I didn't really like the ones that they got into with the angels and the demons and right. you know, God. And all. I liked their first seasons better where it's yeah. just the monsters we were dealing with. But um, you could, I, I don't know what my point was. This is what well, happens <laughs> when, when you 
drink while we talk. You've, you've had some wine. <laughs> I have just a little bit. Um, I had a point, but maybe it'll come back to me later. Well, those are super cool concepts. I really like, uh, I really like all those concepts. And I think that's probably one of my favorite things about this topic is just like, there's so much you can do with them. Um, and, and that's, really interesting to me because like even in urban fantasy where it's set in this world you can add in a god of whatever and it and it works and you can make yeah. it work hey everyone i'm lisa rasmussen and i'm the host of wit girls podcast that i run together with my co-host christina gibson in our show we share news and our own experiences from working with the microsoft 365 cloud and with a special focus on sharepoint and teams WIT stands for Women in Tech, but this podcast is not only for women, it's for anyone who wants to learn about these apps and how you can use them like we do daily. Sometimes we have interesting guests on the show that shares their story and knowledge. You can also hear us talk about our current projects, how we solve a certain problem, or we can deep dive into a specific topic. You'll find us on Spotify, iTunes, Podcaster, or any other podcast platform by searching for WIT Girls. And while you are there, don't forget to subscribe to us so you don't miss out on new episodes. Or go to witgirlspodcast.com. Cheers! On that note, I've got examples of books that have gods in them. And there's so many more out there that I haven't even read. I was going through titles on when I was researching and I'm like, Ooh, I need to read that one. Ooh, what's that all about? And there's some that I've heard of that I've never read that I'm now thinking, Oh, those that's supposed to be a classic. I need to go read that. Right. But like the Alona Andrews series, the magic bites, magic, you know, the one that with magic in the title. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm going to stop you right there. Cause that them, they, I haven't been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> they are some of the coolest concept creators. I don't know what is wrong with my words right now, y'all, but bear with me. Um, the concept of their gods is just one of the coolest things to me. Um, because you said, you know, that the ancient gods are awaking with the return of magic. And that is just bril- brilliant. It's just mm-hmm. so cool with how they did that in urban mm-hmm. fantasy. Sorry, yeah, that was I, just my I fan agree. Girling. <laughs> that that is a an interesting series. It's the the two of them, the husband wife team that we've talked about before, and you know we've got our main character, and it's definitely urban fantasy. And you've got the tech fighting with the magic, and and it is the the, the it brings so much depth to their series by having the fact that magic shifts that starts to awake the, the awaken the gods and what she has to fight. And she's almost godlike herself in some of her powers that she comes up with. But, um, and also some of hers, the belief uh, by the people of the gods gives them their power. Right. And you did an episode for our Myth and Monsters episodes where you covered the tulpa. And that's what it reminds me of. That's true. Um, where, you know, the belief in something is what causes it to exist or mm-hmm. to be stronger. So that's, mm-hmm. that's what that reminds me of, which is really cool. The Iron Druid Chronicles. I have read maybe three so far of that series. Your dad has read all of them. I haven't um, read them yet. They are, they are very good, but I must say it's written by a man. The main character is a man. And for some reason, I didn't feel like excellent books. I'm not saying don't read them. Right, right. I'm just saying something about the way he wrote them. I could definitely tell it was a man writing it. I didn't feel like it was that he considered a female point of view. But he wasn't supposed to. He's a right. male druid. So right. really. And, and I feel like that. Yeah, because Dad loves those series, and I and I need to I need to read them. I would love to read them because I have plans to write uh, books from the point of view of a male character in the future. So like, it'd be good to read books like that. Um, and That's I definitely another episode we need to do is writing from the other sex's point of view. Yeah, that would be a really good, uh, really good episode. But yeah, I, I get I get where you're coming from in terms of that 
and I'm, I'm curious to read them myself because dad does love them so much. And he's like specifically recommended them to me when I'm like, I don't have anything to read. He's like, you should read these. And I'm like, oh, I probably should then. And we have all of them. Um, men think differently than women. So it's interesting to see this character's relationships with women in the, in the book. Yeah. Um, is your cat zo got zoomies? He, I well, I feel like he walked by like a few minutes ago and it just kind of caught up with my brain. <laughs> so it could have been my cat or it could have been a ghost, but you know, who knows? Well, we've got a, a dog in the household now. He, she's been out for a walk. Ah. Um, so, okay, so the Iron Druid, I think that most of his are Greek gods, I believe. Mm, um, mm -hmm. And then the Lightning Thief, the, all the Percy Jackson series, that's, I mean, that's what it's all about. They're all gods. And Absolutely, yeah. That's that Zeus being horny thing that we were talking about earlier. Um, right. So that's all about Greek gods. And it's, it's an excellent example of how to right with gods but it's gods that we all know mm -hmm. you know they're they're pre they're it's all the true greek gods so we all know zeus we all know hera we all know those those characters so that you know is kind of created already in those books right the Dragonlance series which i have said is the very first series that i ever read in fantasy and it's based on dungeons and dragons so there were clerics in it um, the, and the clerics get their magic power from their gods. They have to pray or there's different ways that you, what you meditate, whatever. Right. To have the God bestow you your magic. Gotcha. Um, interesting. Ser I love that series. And then there's Mercy Thompson with Patricia Briggs and right. our God is in it. The, well, the Christian God is in it because you know, her faith protects her from vampires and that kind of thing. Just like you think of the Christian faith and the cross and all of that uh, protecting her. But you've also got the fox. No, not the fox. Coyote. Coyote. <laughs> got your book confused. Um, <laughs> Coyote is an ancient god, an Indian, uh, American, uh, Native American god. And so her books have gods in them in a whole bunch of different ways on top of having the vampires and the werewolves and all the different things yeah and i love coyote because he's very much a character uh that just shows up and he's you know got his own thoughts and, and that kind of thing but he's also a rock that gets thrown at mercy a lot and uh he's also uh helpful he has saved her life in the past as well mm -hmm. i mean granted it's mostly his fault that she like dies but still he, he's <laughs> he's along the lines of your tricksters that you've talked about ah yeah i i would yeah. consider coyote a, a trickster 100 percent. whenever i do trickster research for future novels and stuff like he, coyote is there like that mm -hmm. he is one of the biggest trickster deities that is well known and uh and talked about in terms of uh tricksters we've got Cresley Cole, we've talked about her. Um, hers are more, well, I wouldn't say more. They're, I think they're equally romance and urban fantasy. Yeah. Um, the, the crux of the book is the relationship between one particular set of characters, the male and the female, that have their little relationship. But, yeah, the genre is technically called paranormal romance. But, but that yeah. world is so deep. And in that, there's gods we're watching as she's writing, we're watching the formation of a God, I think. Oh, in that absolutely. Series. I'm um, pretty sure. And I don't want to give too much away because y'all, I really recommend that you go and read these books. Even if, you know, it took me forever to get Taylor to read them because she had this connotation of, Oh, it's a romance. I, I don't even, yes, the romance is there, <laughs> but this world is incredible the depth that she has in this world and the creatures and the monsters and all of that i i think you ought to go and read it but that's a really neat this is another book where the belief in the gods makes them powerful and in fact the belief in the gods i think can make a god yeah in that yeah. series i think I, so i find interesting um kf breen the fire and ice trilogy it has demons we don't see 
God necessarily in it. Well, I haven't gotten too far into that series. I think I've read the first two. I think it's a trilogy. Oh, it is a trilogy. I just said. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm down to this much wine. Um, but it's got demons. So, of course, then there must be gods as well. Um, the Magicians TV show. Yeah. Which I think yeah. is also books. It is. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's got gods in it, and that's interesting, the things that go on in that series. It is, because they created the, the gods that they bring in um, to this series. There are two of them that I remember, um, and I know there are more, but I, I don't remember them off the top of my head. But there are two of them specifically who created another world just because, you know, they felt like it. Um, mm -hmm. And so they created this entire world called Fillory. It's all in the first episode, if you guys want to go watch it. Um, and so they, they created that just because they felt like it and one of them was chaotic and one of them was very orderly and so that made Fillory somewhat balanced and so like mm -hmm. I just think that's a really cool way to bring about um you know new new plot lines and new worlds and new stories uh and to, I to your think novel. weren't they brothers the two gods yeah I think they were Umber and Ember I yeah say. Umber and Ember yeah. yeah so that that's another way to bring in in gods and then I have actually written several books or i'm in the process of writing books that have gods in them i've got my a different kind of evil which is trick who is a demon hunter so obviously if there's demons you think there's got to be a a god i haven't delved into the religion but it's there it's more subtle than actually writing you know there's going to be gods in this book but, right. but there are demons so um there's that one and then my twin saga like you were talking about it's very D and D in the type of gods that there are. So there's the good, the neutral, and the evil. And my book is very simplistic in. Well, I don't want to say. Well, the the gods, the concept of religion is is simplistic in that oh, it's yeah. good, neutral, and evil. Right. Um, and you know you have your chaotic good and chaotic neutral and you know all of those things just like in D and D. Um. But one of my favorite that deals with gods that I've written that I'm in the process of writing is my Hallow story. I think I've talked about her. Did your, your headphones died? They died, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, in my Hallow, my elemental series, these elementals came to earth back in the time of the Greeks and the Romans. So they aren't gods but they are where the gods came from that we as the little humans that were here with these powerful creatures that came, we immediately assumed, Oh, they're gods. And so we had Dionysus, the God of wine. And we had, you know, and those are actual characters in this series of mine. Nice. They are these elementals. They're not gods, but they were so powerful at the time that they came that the indigenous people considered them gods. Right. And it's the story of them there. It's time for them to move their, the, uh, I don't remember what I called it. The alignment, the alignment is coming, which is the time that they can go between realms. And so it's that that is coming. And there are people that have decided there are these gods that have decided they want to stay on earth. And some are like, no, we have to go. It's our time. This is the rules. And so it's very interesting. And my characters are get sucked up into this. That's awesome. So I don't know, do any of your books have gods in them? So I kind of, I, well, no, first, first of all, I don't ever explicitly state uh, that there are gods um, in any of my stories, I think. Um, but I do mention it a little bit in Mac, or at least I did at one point. I don't remember if I left it in there. Um, but they, they mention it, I think I did, because uh, she mentions... Um, Oh, well, they say that, you know, tricksters just came from old gods or whatever. Um, so basically, they're the descendants of deities and, um, you know, because there's Loki, the, the god of mischief, and, and he's a trickster and that kind of thing. And so, you know, Mac obviously makes a joke yeah, about it. I didn't even think of all of those, all the Marvel characters. You got Thor and Loki and all of those. That's, those are all gods that you can use. I mean, in some ways it's a good thing to use the established what the people know because it gives them that familiarity. We've talked about that before in past episodes, 
but in another way, it's exciting to create something that's never been seen before with the religion. So. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, no, I don't, I guess I don't have any, uh, explicit gods in any of any of my stories which is really interesting now that I think about it because I've written like five or six books it, to me in my mind it's more of an epic fantasy type thing to put gods and that kind of thing in there but I think it works just as well to use it with sci-fi or urban fantasy or anything well and let me add here I mean I've already got concepts for future books with the Mac series and one of them is definitely based on a god so there, there you go. There's a trickster yeah. god that I'm going to end up using in the, in the future of the series. So oh, that's exciting. You should get on that. Uh, it's yes, I should. <laughs> yes, you should. Well, that's all I've got. Do you have anything more? Oh, um, yes. Well, an interview question. So oh. nothing more about the, the episode, but okay. I do have an interview question. Pick one of your main characters out of any of your stories. If they were a god, what would they be the god of? <laughs> oh my goodness um you know immediately beck comes to mind and of she's the most normal human mundane character that there is she has no magic no nothing so what would she be the god of well she does love mythology and fairy tales and that kind of thing so she might have to be the god of of fairy tales and you know, bringing, bringing magic to humans through fairy tales, maybe. Nice. I like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I would have to pick, uh, Mac because she's the one that I've finished and she's the most, uh, complete, I guess that I have. Um, and she's already a trickster. So, you know, she's got her trickster magic and everything. Um, but she really likes to cook. So she might be like the God of flavor. You know, I like love that. Kind of that. Um, that's, that's like her thing. She, her backstory, uh, involves her dad and he always wanted a restaurant and she ended up, uh, coming up with that dream and, and got it done. And, and so she really enjoys cooking and, um, you know, feels closer to him, uh, when she cooks. And so that, that might be hers is like the goddess of flavor or something like I that. I love that. Yeah. She and Dionysus could, you know, meet and oh, have they a could. good time. That would be great. <laughs> Cause I've got Dionysus in my hallow books he is he is a trip let me tell you you could do a crossover we could that would be cool all right guys well thanks for listening that's all we've got today we will do another episode and it may even be next week about how you go about creating gods because there are things that you need to think about questions you know we like to go through those here's the questions to ask to help you explore how to build gods into it so at some point we will do an episode on how to do everything we just talked about yeah. but in the meantime thank you for listening come check out our website we're at eat drink right podcast.com um, you can find all our social media there we've got uh, instagram twitter uh, facebook uh, our email is there so you can come contact us there any anything you want please give me jokes because every week they're they're i think getting worse um but yeah come come leave us messages we'd love to hear from you let us know topics you want us to talk about we'd be glad to to go there yeah we've taken recommendations before too and it's it's been a blast i love um being able to do an episode on what you guys want to hear so all right so we will see you next time thanks guys <laughs>